What's up, everybody? Welcome back to part two of the Zendikar Rising set review. We are doing black and red. We try to go quick because there's a lot of cards that are just like limited, you know, commons and uncommons that aren't super exciting. You don't care about them. We don't care to talk about them. But um, again, there's so many kicker cards and there's so many cards that do two things. And there's so many new mechanics that change the game, like the, um, the double face cards, the double face lands, that like it's kind of hard to just breeze past them. I mean... It's not like Questing Beast. We're like, oh, Questing Beast has a lot of text, but like, it's still just a great creature. You don't have to say too much about it. Like a lot of these cards, you're like trying to evaluate their applications and like in in terms of magic, the game. You know. Anyway, acquisition expert one and a black for a one two. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent reveals the number of cards from their hand equal to the number of creatures in your party. You choose one of those cards and they discard it. So it's kind of like a kite sail freebooter, like blackmail type card. Except for it deals with it, right? It gets rid of the card. Well, right. Blackmail does, too. Blackmail is like they reveal three cards from their hand, and you could discard one of them. So this is, at worst, a Burglar Rat. At worst, a Burglar Rat for two. Right. Yeah. It's always going to be... They're always going to discard their choice of a card at some... <clears throat> at, you know, in some degree. I think it's good. They're, yes. I think this this will see play. I think there will be a Luris deck, uh, and this fits right in it. Oh, this is a great Luris target. Yes. Oh, Yes. 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 Blood beckoning. One black for a sorcery. Return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. These cards Kicker suck. is three. If this spell is kicked, return two creatures from your graveyard to your hand. This card's bad. If it's, it's a, an, if it costs two mana, I probably still wouldn't play it. If it was an instant, it'd be good. Yeah. It's also a uh, just so you know, it's a strict upgrade to raise dead, which is one black return a creature from your graveyard. Ooh. You can kick it. If you guys, if you guys are big Raise Dead fans in the in the chat, can I get some uh, can I get some love for Raise Dead in the chat, guys? Blood price four mana for a sorcery. Okay, well you're probably not going to be great. I'm thinking. Look at the top four cards of your library. Put two of them into your hand, and the rest in the bottom of your library. You lose two less. So this is just bitter ordeal. Yep. I don't think it's it's not constructible. It's not. No, it's not constructible. Blood Chief's thirst. One black for a sorcery. Kicker is three, so it's either one black or four. Destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost two or less. If the spells kick, destroy a creature or a planeswalker. I think this card's fantastic. We found the card in the set that's an uncommon that if you find it in a foil, it's probably worth like 15, <laughs> bucks. It's the $20 foil uncommon of yeah. the set. Yes. That's yep. a that's hilarious. Yes. Yeah. Card's we found great. the Eternal Witness. Yeah. The card's great. Of Kozilek. It goes with... Um, it goes with uh, the two mana guy that copies spells like on turn three, killing two creatures, casting that spell, uh, the the two one, and then casting this after it's just that's just busted. I mean, one mana, like this does fulfill like the fatal push role in the set. Two or less, it, like it's two or less, right? So it hits everything fatal push hits without revolt. And then in the late game, four mana, you just kill any planeswalker or any creature, which is really good. Yep. It's basically just Veraska's contempt at sorcery speed, where you don't draw the card, but you can pay it, you can play it for one in the early game. Yeah. Yeah, this card's good. Yeah. Coveted prize. Five mana for a sorcery that costs one less for each creature in your party. So, again, as low as one mana. Search your library for a card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. If you have a full party, which you're hoping for, you may cast a spell with converted mana cost four or less without paying its mana cost. Not good enough. I, I don't think you can read these cards and assume you're going to have four. A full party. I agree. I mean, five mana for like, what's your what's your best possible situation? You have two party members, and this costs three, so it's just a tutor for three. I think that the only way this card's playable is if you guaranteed me I could cast it for demonic for demo mana. <laughs> Love it. So like, you'd want to have three party members, and you cast this for two. Yep, that's it. That's the only way this card is playable is if you I can pretty much guarantee myself. I mean, where do you have Grim Tutor, right? I mean, but that's funny because if you have two party members, this is just straight better than Grim Tutor. You don't have well, life loss and you don't have double black, right? So like, and it's still not playable when it's better than Grim Tutor. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Grim Tutor is such trash, dude. I'm sorry. I remember when they reprinted Grim Tutor and it was a big do big deal, and I and I, was just and like, I, like, I thought it was a big deal because of for for money reasons, but no. Uh, well, yeah. it was because now it's like you can get a copy of Grim Tutor for 20 bucks for your commander deck, so. Or get some sweet alternate art. <laughs> Deadly Alliance. Five mana. It costs one less for each creature in your party. Instant destroy a creature or planeswalker. 
Destroying a planeswalker for like a common. That's what? I like this trend. I think planeswalkers being mythic um, means you should have more answers to them on common cards because it's an, it's a, a lot of times it's going to be largely irrelevant. But when it is relevant, it, it, it means life or death in a game. This card reminds me of a removal spell version of, I can't think of the name of the card. Uh, it's a, it's a cost two and a black. It's a discard spell. And if you dealt damage to your opponent, or if your, if your opponent lost life, it costs one black. That's a cool story, bro. I don't think it's, <laughs> is it playable? I honestly think this may be. And the reason I think this may be is because if you're playing this in like a, let's just say like a two color or a mono black aggro deck, party deck, obviously, if you have two creatures, paying three mana at instant speed so you can respond to their removal spells, you can respond to, you know, before damage and have a, no, nah, it's too, four minutes too much, five minutes too much. <laughs> like, like the, the amount of, like there's, I think there's just better cards than this. There's cards that do this effect for cheaper. I mean, if you're playing in a, a low to the ground aggro deck in black, you're going to be playing the card we just saw. Right. Yeah. And that's always going to be four mana to kill something. This is hopefully going to be four mana to kill something. You you saw me you saw me like do my best to try and make it playable, but I I just couldn't. I I talked my I, I was talking too much. But that's good though. Sometimes you have to talk it out to like get to the like okay. After I've discussed it, like <laughs> after I've went through it, like I've gone through the motions and I figured it's not as good as I thought it would be. Yeah. Like sometimes you do have to just talk yourself through it. Demon's Disciple, 3-1 three, for 3. When it enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or planes. Okay, so we're like you just tell us as Plague Crafter. You don't have to like... Yeah. Well, it's it, worse. Well, it is It is worse because... It's it, a 3-2. Or 3-1. It's a 3-1 instead of a 3-2, and it doesn't say if they don't have one, they discard a card. Oh, that's right. So they don't even have, like, they could if they don't have a creature or planeswalker, this does nothing. So like this, I, I actually like cards like this. I loved the card play crafter because it's a great sideboard card when you're playing against pure control matchups and they have like a, you know, back in the day, they have five mana Teferi. You know what I mean? Like it, this is a three mana creature that you cast and just straight up deals with their Teferi. Like I, I do think these cards are good. I think this will, this could see play. Well, but you already have cards like this that deal with Teferi, right? Like you have. Not that, well, I guess it doesn't leave a body on the battlefield. You might as well just. Right. Like if this guy, if you're having to sack itself, then it's like, well, all right. Yeah, I don't think this is better. It's not better than Plague Crafter, right? Like, no, it's not. And we're no. I don't think Plague Crafter is really seeing a ton of play. I'm gonna keep. It going. is part of a part. Well, it's kind of part of a party, right? It's only part of a party if you don't sacrifice. If you have another cleric. <laughs> okay, we're gonna keep going. Right, like if you right, if you don't have right, so like you're gonna have to sacr like this is part of a party, but you're presuming that you're gonna sacrifice a different part of the party, right? <laughs> so unless you have two of one thing, you're still gonna lose a party member. We're still gonna lose a party member here, guys. And if you have two of the same people at, at a party, that's you're just a bad party. Every every Jeez. drana is always pretty good in some format. Like what? the the drana from Rise was was great in in limited the five mana one. Um, it was, it was just broken. It was just broken in Rise of Zendikar, Rise of, Rise of Eldrazi draft. Um, oh, draft? Okay. Yeah. Drana, the last blood chief, five mana for a four, four flyer. When this attacks, defending player chooses a non-legendary creature card in your graveyard. You can return that card to the battlefield with one one counter on it. This creature's vampire edition. This seems good. <sighs> It's a 4-4 flyer for 5 that, like, whenever it attacks, it doesn't even have to connect, dude. It just has to attack. It costs 5. So give it haste. Stop complaining. That costs more mana. More mana says. This is a free... Re uh, every Like, there's so many reanimate spells that cost 5. This is a 4-4 four, four for, for flyer that does it for free every turn. <sighs> And it gets a plus one plus one counter. I think I feel like good. I feel like there's always these weird ways to reanimate creatures from your graveyard, and they're just never good. Like there's one there was there was one well there was a, a black card from the last set that like you exiled cards from your graveyard, and then there was some way to trigger it to bring them back. Like this, ugh, I don't think this is. I don't know. Rob, it's part of a party, okay? Oh, yeah, it is a cleric. Put it on the list. Yeah, you lose. Everybody loves vampire cleric. I think this. I think this card is sweet. I don't think it's going to be a staple. I don't think it's going to be like a, a like a the best card in the format. But I think it's good. I think the card is good. 
This is the this is one of the cards that Frank dies on the dies on the cross for trying to play and then just gets blasted. Oh, in the for sure, I will definitely try to play this. <laughs> but like, I will also try to manipulate my graveyard in such a way that like I know exactly what I'm getting back. Yeah. Like you choose. I'll, I'll, all right, I'll put one Elgar Elder Gargroth in my graveyard. I'll attack with Drana. Comes hey, into play. Can we can we can we just talk about how how much Elder Gargroth has played? It doesn't do anything when it is a battlefield, but it's played a lot. Do you remember who someone said it? one of us? There was two people on our on our set review. One of us, I think, said it was really good and they liked it a lot. And the other one was like, "No, it's not very good." Do you remember? I brought I brought it up specifically to make you feel bad. So yes, I remember. You made how do you make? I said it was great, and you said you no, didn't no, like that it. was backwards. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna move on and assume that everyone knows the truth here. Uh, Drana's Silencer, six mana for a three two, so probably trash. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, a creature gets negative X, negative X, where X is the number of creatures in your party. So this is a 3-2 for 6 that's only going to give one negative 1, negative 1 if it's the only creature out. Oh. <sighs> no. Next card. Dreadworm. Oh, <laughs> I gave your mom the Dreadworm. 5-4 oh. for 5. She hasn't walked since. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Rob, she has a family. Talk about your Dreadworm. Let's go. Okay. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, it gains indestructible. Oh, hold on. Would it have been funny if this card got bigger whenever it landed in the battlefield? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good gravy. Whenever Dread, whenever Dreadworm gets aroused, give it plus one, plus one. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Expedition. This is a family-friendly <laughs> family friendly review, Rob. Not bad. Expedition Skulker. Two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. It's a rogue. It has death touch as long as you control another rogue. The cards like this really annoy me because I'm like, it's in my party deck, and I want to have two rogues. I want to have yeah. a warrior and a cleric and a wizard. Don't make me double up on rogues because they just take it away from my party mechanics. That actually kind of seems like a design fail to me. I, I think it should say if you control a warrior, another party wizard. Because why is a rogue specifically going to give this death touch? That doesn't. Yeah, make like sense. why can't the wizard do something to like you know zap him to give him death touch? You know. I don't like it. Me neither. I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it just on flavor alone. Yeah. But Frank, it does <laughs> get harder when a land enters the battle. <laughs> Rob, let me tell you about my indestructible worm, okay? Mm -hmm. Feed the swarm, one in a black, destroy a creature or enchantment in opponent controls? What? Oh god, you lose life equal to that permanence converted mana cost. Like I I don't like this already. I'm super uncomfortable target. with black cards dealing with enchantments. That's exact. And it's like, targeted now. What? Right. It's not like... We just saw Farika's, like, touch or whatever the Libation. card was. There was a card in Theros that uh, target player sacrifices an enchantment, right? So, like, they don't get to choose. And sacrifice is very much a black mechanic. But, like, I don't understand, like, where black is suddenly all uh, automatically able to deal with enchantments. Like, since when? This, well, honestly... This, this card... Um, would probably see a split with the one mana in a, in like a mono black deck, a black aggro deck. This card will probably be played. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, the fact that it can deal with enchantments, like I can play mono black devotion and have an answer for an enchantment now is is ridiculous. Like, yeah, it does It doesn't seem correct. Like, I don't understand. I wish I understood the like because it's a it's a massive color of uh, color pie switch. Yeah. Like black has never had a way to deal with enchantments, and now all of a sudden I it's had like two or three cards in the past few sets I, can. I don't think this card is just a sideboard card this is this is 100% a hundred percent kills a creature you're they're always gonna yeah. have a creature like your opponents are always gonna have creatures so anyway yeah <clears throat> i'm just i'm more discouraged about it just because i don't understand it i'm like but why right yeah, I, like I'm if it's, if there was a blue card that was like three mana destroy a planeswalker i'd be like what i don't yeah. get it yeah <clears throat> <clears throat> ghastly gloom hunter two mana for a one one Flying and lifelink, so it's basically Vampire Nighthawk. If Ghastly Gloom Hunter was kicked, it enters the battlefield with two one one counters on it, and no the good. kicker is four. So it's a three three flying lifelinker for five, or a one one flying lifelinker for two. Nope. Both rates don't Boopy. impress me much. Ghoul Draz Mucklord, three mana for a two three. When Ghoul Ghoul Draz Robert Lord <laughs> enters, dies. Put a one one counter on a creature you control. Great and limited. What snapped the arm off of that thing? Look at it. He's pissed. Look, his arm's bent backwards. Michael, that's just how... God, it's twice I've called you Michael. Rob, Jesus. that's just how alligator arms look, Robert. No, I have alligator arms. That is not how they look. Hmm. Well, who am I to... Who am I to judge? Yeah. Okay. 
Well, listen, Michael. Hagra Constrictor, 0-0 zero, zero for 3. It enters the battlefield with 2-1-1 one, one counter, so it's 2-2 two, two for 3. Oh. Each creature you control with a 1-1 one, one counter has menace, so it's a 2-2 two, two menace for 3. Interesting. It's a snake that gets larger. Huh. No, it doesn't. Well, it doesn't get larger than its initial 2-2. Two, two. <clears throat> well, it's a 0-0. Zero, zero. Rob, it's already as hard as it's going to get, buddy. <laughs> <clears throat> it's at peak hardness, okay? It's not getting any bigger. It does have menace, so you're going to have to really struggle to block it, but... <laughs> But it doesn't have much <clears throat> in the end. Oh, the Ziggs has a response from Maro about the enchantments, apparently. Here's what we're up to. We realized that three different colors could get rid of artifacts, white, red, and green. But only two could get rid of enchantments, white and green. Black seemed like the right choice as it had two permanent types it couldn't remove. Now red has trouble with enchantments and black has trouble with artifacts. Our constraints for black were as follows. We definitely uh, want black to be the third in efficiency behind white and green. And I'm we didn't okay want black to be able to destroy its own enchantments. That's not bad. Because, I'm, I mean, like, okay because you don't want to get rid of Demonic Pack. There's, like, certain black right. enchantments that have to stay on the board for, like, right. you know, detrimental reasons. <clears throat> you know, I like that. Yeah. I like that. Because it's kind of like, it's it's not changing things just to change them. It's rounding them out. And I, I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that uh, explanation. Yep, I'm good with that. Highborn Let's... Vampire. 4-3 four, for 4 and let me just check the text. Nope, does nothing else. Okay. Inscription of Ruin. I'm going to write this one down. I think they're all wonderful. Are there five of these or only three? I don't know, man. I just work here. Okay, well, we'll see. Inscription of Ruin for three mana, two and a black. Choose one. The kicker is four, so seven total. Target opponent discards two cards, so it's again, it's mind rot at the, at the base level. It's just a mind rot. Return a creature from your graveyard... Uh, to the battlefield that costs two or less. Not bad. Nope. Excuse me. <clears throat> Which Diet Coke. Destroy a creature with converted mana cost three or less. Smother. And these are all fine. Yeah, this is this is still good. Again, the versatility. If they have three cards, I'll make them discard two. If they have a, a Knight of the Reliquary, I'll kill it. Like, there's a lot of... Like, this, this card's just good. The only problem I think that this card has is if you look... It's very limited by its, by its modes. A creature that costs two or less... Deal with a creature that costs three or less. Discarding two cards is kind of flexible. Any deck that <laughs> can run that. But the decks that would want to return a creature that costs two or less, they're probably not. I mean, I guess the kicker is only four and it costs three, so it's not eight. It's only seven. It's definitely not as good as the blue one. But but again, it's still not a bad card. Well, don't forget the destroy creature with converted mana costs three or less kills both Euro and Croxa, which is worth noting. Also, you can you can actually target your own creature and then bring it back if it costs two or less. No, you can't. No. Because it, it would resolve It wouldn't be in the graveyard when you're targeting. Yep, yep, yep. Why would you make stuff up to, to people? That's really weird. Sorry. Okay. Lithoform Blight. Two mana, enchant land. When it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Enchanted land loses all land types and abilities and has tap to add colorless or tap and pay one to add one mana of any color. Mm, no. It's weird. Yeah, it's weird. I thought this was like a mana screw card where you're like, oh, I'll just cut you off of this color or like it turns off a Tron land. <laughs> I guess it does kind of turn off a Tron land. It's an interesting... It's an interesting answer to a Tron land. Let's you draw a card. I think I think there's other ways to deal with it. Not in bla like it. in black though. I mean, the only decks that are that are mono black are 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 going underneath it. They're not taking a turn off to play a two drop that just potentially slows down your opponent. Okay, but in modern, if you're playing like a black deck, like in, without red, like it's not really taking a turn off. Like, I don't what? know. What? Huh? If you're if they're playing Tron and you're playing a black deck that doesn't have access to red cards, and you're playing like this playing this on their like Urza's Tower isn't really taking a turn off. You still get to draw a card, and it yeah, shuts but I'm off saying, their. No, no, I'm saying you're taking a turn off because if we're talking about a mono black deck, it's got to be an aggro deck. N n no, not what I'm playing. It doesn't have to be mono black. What if it's like nope. black white? What if it's a black green deck? I guess those also have. Any, I don't know, man. Like I'm just saying. What do you mean? You know, you know what cards in mono black that that can that's better than this? Damping Tell sphere. Me. Moving on. Malakir blood priest two in a uh, two one for two. When it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X. New gain where X were. Guess where? Guess what X is, Rob? It's one. Uh, well, I was gonna say it's. I was I was asking what it references. The right number of number of creatures in your party. Yes. It's, it's one. Maybe it's two. I, the, this one is one of the X cards that doesn't seem that that bad. I mean, it's only a two mana, so I mean, if this, if this ETBs and drains, that's eh, still not good enough. It sucks. 
Super Fritz, have a good afternoon, buddy. Yeah, but the thing is, like, <clears throat> how many two ones are you? Can you can you actually play in your in your friggin' party deck? You know? Yeah. No, I don't like it. I don't like it. Either. Marauding good. Blight Priest, three two for three. <laughs> Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Interesting change. It doesn't say they lose that much life. They lose one life. Yeah. So if so... you gain four life in one shot, they're gonna lose one life. Still don't think Hence this why is this good. is common, not uncommon yeah. or rare. Okay. Mind Carver. One black. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to a creature you control. So apparently this is either a theme or like just a new way enchantment equipments are going to work. Yeah. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus oh. It gets plus three, plus one, as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. I don't think this is that great. No, I don't think this one's that good, no. I mean, this is consistently going to be a plus one, plus oh. And you're kind of hoping it's plus three plus one, but like I think you just assume play the like the demonic enchantment from uh from the most recent set, right? Demonic embrace or whatever it is. Embrace, yeah, I think embrace is just better. Because <clears throat> again, it's a card you can get back just like an equipment, but it's always gonna be plus three plus one, and it gives you flying. So yep. Mind drain. Target opponent discards two cards, mills a card, and loses one life. You gain one life. This is just strictly better than mind rot, man. Oh my yep. god. Yep, just an upgrade. Yep. Oh my god. Gaining life is interesting. I don't know if Mind Rot's good enough, but... Mm. Okay. No. Nighthawk Scavenger. I actually... I really like this card a lot. Yeah, I can see why. What? Why? What does that mean? That seems this just seems insulting. like a Frank card. Really? Why? It's in Soul Tie Colors. It's, it's got a lot of text, but it's not like questing be stupid. Okay, so I'm actually I'm a, you. I'm a big fan of Vampire Nighthawk, right? Like, I think the card is just like... It's just like a very balanced good creature I it deals it deals damage you gain life it can kill anything it has evasion like nighthawk is just a, a very very like it's well balanced right like it's not overpowered but it's like if, if your opponent plays a nighthawk and you have a good creature or like you don't have anything like it's it's a threat it's a solid threat and like i've i have it in cubes you know like i think it's good i think this just replaces that you know like if this if this is a four three lifelink death touch flyer for three mana <laughs> Which I think yes. it could be very frequently. Like Oh, easily. That's really good. Yeah. Like this is like this could get to like Baneslayer stats if they have four creatures in there. It's like it's a five three flying death touch lifelink for three mana. Yeah, like, this card's really good. I don't know. This card's great. I think this card is super sweet. Dies to bolt, literally unplayable. Li literally you can't even play it. Like you can't even tap the mana to get this guy. I think it's great. Put it on the list. I think it's a very good card. I agree. This is like and also in any cube that I, that has a vampire nighthawk, this is just a direct replacement. Mm -hmm. Because it's always if it was like if its power was star and totally reliant on the opponent's graveyard, that's one thing. But as a one three, it's it's just always gonna kill something or gain you life. So yeah. <clears throat> Namana mm -hmm. Skitter Sneak four mana for a three four. As long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard, it gets plus one plus zero oh, and has menace. Nope. That's super cool. See you later. Namana Sky Dancer, 2 1 for 3. Flash, flying, lots of things. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent mills two cards. Why does it have flash? Because it's, uh, it's a rogue. You? Yeah, but uh, not all rogues have flash. Yeah, no. <clears throat> Usually don't, don't the flash think... ability is connected to like the, the, the bigger ability on a card. Like, target creature gets negative 2, negative 0. So you're like, I'm going to flash it in and use this during combat. But like. I don't think this is play. I don't think this is even playable um, in a rogue, in a rogue deck. I think the only way that this becomes playable is if it costs two mana. Not a constructed, but I'll play a two one flying flash in, in limited. I guess yeah. it's. I guess it's because if they have like six cards in their graveyard, like you want, like you, like you could mill them at instant speed, and so you're like Nemana Skitter Sneak gets plus one plus zero oh, and menace at instant speed if you like trigger those last two cards in the graveyard. Yeah, so and that, also, um, you know, also there are there are other cards in standard that whenever a rogue enters the battlefield, mills cards. Yeah, so it's, you're just milling. That's all. No priest of oblivion. Oh my god, this is like this might be one of my favorite cards in the set. <laughs> two mana for a two one menace lifelink. So already, like, this is a fantastic two one a two mana creature. Yeah. Right, like menace and lifelink means you're gonna get a, a good amount of hits in. For four mana kicker, so six mana total, when it enters the battlefield, return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. Like, Very it's good. Just a re most reanimate spells cost five. <clears throat> or, you know, old, in the olden days they cost four. <clears throat> Nowadays they cost mostly five. So for one more mana, you get the versatility of a 2-1 with menace and lifelink, either by itself or with the uh, reanimate. Like, this card is fantastic. 
it's a good way to bring a second party member to the party. Right. It's a vampire cleric as well. So like, yep. again, it, it plays well with vampire tribes and like the, the party. Oh my God. You can lure yep. us this back. Yep. You can kick it with lure. Oh God. They're doing it chat. Also, I want to, I want to get your, I want to get your take while you type that there. Someone in chat, An <clears throat> Andrew McAllister, 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 maybe. No, I think so, but there's no S. So Andrew McAllister so says that the Vampire Nighthawk is a flying goif, and it's a future $50 rare. That is not true. There's a huge difference between a two-drop and three-drop. Yeah, I agree with that. Plus, it's not it's not counting your graveyard. It's not counting ra all, car all card types. Uh, it's just, is it creatures or card types? It's creatures, right? No, it, it, it's all, oh, it's all card, types. card types. But it's only your opponent's graveyard. Sure. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oblivion's Hunger. One and a black target creature gains indestructible. Draw a card if that creature has a counter on it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Scion of the Swarm. Plus, it's not mythic either. It's just a, it's just a rare. So, is it mythic? Yeah. It's not mythic, right? No, it's a rare. Yeah, okay. Uh, Scion of the Swarm. Five mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. That's That's cool. This is this is my response for everything. I'm like, eh, that's cool. And then we're just going to pass. Yep. Uh, two mana for sc Scourge of the Skyclaves. <laughs> two mana for a Star Star. Kicker is five. When you cast a spell, if it was kicked, each player loses half their life rounded up. So if you're at 19, you're losing 10. Scourge of the Skyclaves power and toughness are equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. If your opponent is at 17, this is a 3-3, three, three, right? Correct. Do you feel like this guy should have flying? Uh, it definitely looks like it would fly. <clears throat> I, I I feel like I'm looking at this card and I'm like, this is a flyer, right? Because it's got kind of like a wing thing going on. If your opponent's at 15, this is a two-mana flyer, right? This is two-mana 5-5, five, five, right? Yeah. This card's good, right? But, but, your, but your life total also has to be lower than 15. I mean, okay. You have the lands, the the lands that you pay three life for. This card seems good. It, this card is good, and I know, um, uh, I know for I know that the uh, you can use it with Nethroy uh, to get additional creatures. Nethroy, oh, the seven mana, the Abzan, the Abzan uh, Godzilla. Ah, uh, <laughs> correct. Yes. Okay. What do you want from me? I think I it's good. Know, just it, it's. I think it's. I think it's good. I think it's good if you're, if you're pay, like if you're if you're going turn one, play the mythic mythic black land into play on tap, lose three life, play a creature. Okay. Turn two, turn two. You you use the two mana sorcery to destroy their creature, and we just pay another two life or three life, and then you play this dude, and I mean it's probably a four four. Also, another card you can cast with Luris. So, yeah. Yeah, so late game it becomes very good. Yeah, all right, I put it on the list. Going to de Death Shadow? No, not a chance. Shadow Stinger, three mana for a one four. Tap another untapped rogue you control. Shadow Stinger gains Death Touch until end of turn. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, that player mills three cards. I mean, it's a decent card. It's just not standard playable. Shadow's Verdict, five mana. Exile all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost three or less from the battlefield, and all creatures and planeswalker cards with converted mana cost three or less from all graveyards. Good card, but five it's five mana. I feel like this could have been four. Yeah. <clears throat> because you're not really hitting that many. Like, let's be honest. For the past two or three years, we've been terrified of three mana planeswalkers, Narset, Tefri, Oko. But there's none of them around anymore that are really problematic, right? Like Oko's banned, Tefri and Narset have rotated or been banned. So, like, the same thing with Eliminate. Like, I don't think Eliminate is actually better than, like, Heartless Act or anything else because there's just not... You're not able to take advantage of the Planeswalker half of those cards. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of the same. Like, it's kind of just a... It's just Ritual of Soot for one more mana for the most part. I mean, it's for Uro, right? Oh, it does Exile. Yeah, the Exile is... The Exile is the and difference, it not the Planeswalker the graveyard. Part. Right. I just... I, it's too much. Five mana is too much. Aggro gets under this? I don't. I don't think so. I literally think. Oh, you mean as far as? Mm, I don't think Aggro decks and Standard are going to win by turn five, though. 
This is a. Uh, it's interesting, right? I, I don't know. Do do we lose the four mana demon that uh, deals one damage to each person on on your upkeep? That costs three. Uh, yes, Spawn of Mayhem was a a Ravnica card. Okay, I was gonna say that's a way to cheat out from under this, but okay, all right. I'm gonna put it on the list because I think it's I think it's good. The effect is good enough. Question: If Uro gets banned, is it playable? It's less so, but I think if there's a like a um, if there's like a white based party deck, I think this is literally just gonna kill every creature they have. Or landfall deck. Mm-hmm. Like if you can survive to this, I think you're good, and you can still play defensive creatures or spot removal. So I don't think this is like. It's not like you're playing nothing before you cast this, so... Just five feels like a lot, man. Like, we've been living in a world where where we had five mana five mana but spells. every so often you have your end hostilities, your fumigates, like, you're... You know, there's yeah, always I, the alternate... I think we got shattered because of how good the <laughs> two three drops have become. Like, we needed to... We, you need it on turn four. So I, I'm kind of scared that turn five is just way too late. But, again, we're losing four sets for this format, so it's a completely different standard format. Sure. It doesn't kill Questing Beast. Keep that in mind. Nothing does. Nothing does. Only Questing Beast can kill Sc Questing Beast. <laughs> Skyclave Shade. Two mana for a 3-1. It can't block, though, so that's too bad. If it was kicked, it enters with two plus one plus one counters, so it is a 5-3. The kicker is three, so it's either a 3-1 for two or a 5-3 for five. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if it is in your graveyard and it's your turn, you may cast it from your graveyard this turn. This card's really freaking good. It's 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 basically really hard to deal with, but it does get Shadows Verdict does deal with this. Yeah. This card's very good. The fact yeah, that you, it has a real blood gas feel to it, right? Yeah, the fact that you can play a top deck a land and then let's say you hit land 7 and you can make 8 power from two yeah, of these you, in your you graveyard. Yeah, you cast you cast one with kick and then you cast one normally. That's crazy. <clears throat> Yeah, it's pretty good. good. I think this is good because there's again, there's no cost to it, right? It just sits in your graveyard, and if you want to kick it, if you want to bring it back, you can. If you don't, you don't. You know, so whatever. I like this card. Whatever, man. Skyclave Shadowcat. For more, someone said for more mana, you can just planar cleanse everything. But like, I'm pretty sure planar cleanse is rotating out because it was an M20. I don't think it's still going to be legal. Uh, four mana for a three three. Two, one in a black, sacrifice another creature, put a plus one plus one counter on Skyclave Shadowcat. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on dies, draw a card. That's, uh, that's too expensive. Don't like it. Soul yeah. Shatter, three mana. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the highest converted mana cost among creatures and planeswalkers they control. This card's good. Is it really? I think I think that this card's playable, yes. It's a one for one. And it only but it gets deals rid of their, with their biggest threat? Hmm. Deals with a planeswalker. I, I think that this card's good. I think that I think that having so let's let's think about the ways right now that we have for at least from the set that we've seen deals with planeswalkers. So if I'm playing some sort of aggro deck that has black, I have nothing so far. We've only seen sorcery speed answers to planeswalkers. This is a card like you you can't take a turn off to sorcery speed and have it countered. This card, this card being an instant is uh, is. Big I think game. being an instant is is great. It's each opponent, so it is great for commander. Okay. Um, man, I'm surprised. I'm surprised Brett didn't chime in for that one. Um, the problem is this the, the lack of choice. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you don't get to choose if it's a creature or a planeswalker, or which creature or planeswalker it is. Even like, it's always the yeah. highest casting cost. And like, while a lot of times you're going to want that, sometimes it's just not good enough. You know? Yeah. Sometimes it's not the one you want to hit. <clears throat> But I don't know. I think it's fine. You want to put it on the list? I think you should. Yeah, I think I think it'll see play. Okay. Subtle, subtle strike. <laughs> uh, two mana. Subtle. Choose one or both. Target creature gets negative one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Isn't this a re this is a reprint, right? Uh, no, it's actually a worse reprint. Really? Isn't there what? Wasn't there a card that did this for one mana? Uh, that seems too good. I don't think so. Subtle Strike is... It was a reprint. It was in Kaladesh. The exact card, yeah. So it is a reprint. It was two mana. Same card. Why do I feel like there was a card that does does the same thing? Has the same option. Tabarax Hope's Demise. 2-2 two, two Flyer for three. Uh, it has lifelink as long as it has five or more 1-1 one, one counters on it. So totally reasonable. 
Uh, whenever another <laughs> non-token creature you control dies, put a 1-1 counter on it. If that creature was a cleric, you can draw a card and lose a life. This is pretty good. It's a lot to process. I know, it's that's It's a 2-2 good. flyer for 3, which is not terrible. Yeah, it's a lot of work for the first paragraph for the well sentence for the first sentence is a lot of work. But the fact that if you sacrifice a cleric, you can draw a card. That seems pretty good. Well, you're not sacrificing it per se. It just has what to die. It... Oh, did I say sacrifice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I meant when everyone just when everyone dies. Depends on how many clerics are that are playable. If there's a playable cleric deck. My only problem is that like. It doesn't do much on its own, and like it's relying on other creatures that I like. Why wouldn't they just kill this instead? Yeah. Yeah. I... Yeah. You probably don't have to put it on a list. It's a two-two for like it's just a two-two. The floor flyer is too low. Uh, I agree. The floor is low. The floor is literally just a two-two flyer for three. That's it. So so here's the way that this card is playable to me. This card is playable as if it has the same text as Mid Midnight Reaper. Other than that, I don't. I, I don't. I think the fact that it has to be a cleric. And it's a 2-2 two, two to start. I think that, that that makes it not good enough. Cool start, bro. I agree with cool. you. I agree All with right. you. If All this right. was like a 3-4 three, flyer for 3, I'd put it on the list instantly because it's just a, a formidable body. Right now, it's like, I'd rather play a Hypnotic Spectre than this guy because at least that does uh -huh. something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <clears throat> Thwart the Grave. God, this Wily... Is it Wily Beckert? This Wily Beckert art is great, dude. Like, he also did the Soul Shadow. That is really right? nice. Yeah, like, his art's really good. I like that it's kind of like a cartoony style, but like not really. Uh, the spell costs one less for each creature in your party. It is six mana, so at most you're gonna pay two. Return a creature card. Return target creature card and up to one target cleric, rogue, warrior, and or your graveyard to the battlefield. So you're basically it's just a reanimate spell for party creatures, basically, which this is, is interesting good. because most creatures are gonna have those types anyway. A lot of the well, time. if you're playing if you're playing this deck, if you're playing this card, then they are. This card's really good. But even if you're not, like, even if you, like, most decks can have, like, a warrior or a wizard or a cleric in it. Inadvertently. You know? Yeah, right. Like, just because that's what creatures have. So a lot of times for five mana, you're going to get, like, two creatures back. This card's very good. Put it on the list. I think it's definitely played. Okay. I mean, especially if there's, a, like, a mid-range party deck. Dude, like, playing four, paying four mana, and also there's no restriction on what you bring back. Like, so this is comparable to... Um, oh, the first one returns anything, right? So you can return, like, Nethroi, and, like, then one party creature. Yeah, you can return, like, Ulma, right? Like, I was going to say, this compares to Call of the Death Dweller, because my guess is you're probably casting this for four mana. And that's really good. Yeah, Kerwin, this definitely seems like art you would appreciate. It has, a, it has kind of, like, a Japanese uh, influence to it, I feel like. Um, also the hands up here are really great. Wow. This art's really good. Um, yeah, this card seems really good. I agree with you. Like you're yep. always getting two creatures returned to the battlefield. Almost six, almost man always. six mana for that is still a good, good, rate. right? Because usually you're paying five. So <laughs> yep. Vanquish the weak three mana for an instant destroy creature with power three or less. Just strictly sure. worse than cards we already have. Yeah. All right. Double face black cards. Boy. Do it. Agadim's Awakening, X, black, black, black. Return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards that each have a different converted mana cost, X or less. So let's say for four, right? Four, for seven mana, you can return any number of creatures that have a different converted mana cost, four or less. So you can return black, 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 one, three, black, 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 two. So any number of creatures that have, is that, is that how that works? Or is it just one four one three one two one one? I think you're correct, and honestly, I didn't read the card that way before, because. It's, oh no! It, it says have a different converted mana cost, different converted mana cost. So it'd be four three two one. So if you do for if you do this for five, you get a five drop, a four drop, a three drop, a two drop, and a one drop. Okay. Hold on. Uh, that's what I thought it was. So for me, the sweet spot was three because you pay six, you get three creatures back, a one drop, a two drop, and three drop. If you have them in the graveyard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's Rob's got to check some messages. No, I'm, I'm, I want to look up a, a card that, that was worded the same. What was the card that did let you do different, different? There's a creature. It's a Wasn't three, a it's a three drop and it's black. What was the companion that did that? The, the companion that did what? Oh, Karuga? 
No, 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 no. The, the companion that was specific to different uh, types. Different mana types. I'm going to look it up. I'll look up companion. You guys can you guys can just hold your horses. What is the um, what is the name what is the name of that? Oh, oh, you're talking about the reanimation spells. Yeah, it's gruesome menagerie. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there wasn't a companion. Maybe I'm just making things up. Isn't there a card that's like Am I just losing my mind? Hold on, I'm going to tell you the card that has the same thing. Is it embodiment embodiment of agonies? It says Embodiment of Agonies enters the battlefield That's, with a 1-1 yeah. counter on it for each different mana cost. So it doesn't say converted. So then that's correct. Converted yes. is... So 6 mana gets you 3 creatures Once you most. convert it, you don't care about the symbols. You don't care about black. You don't care about black, black. You just care about the, the number. Yeah. You're converting it. It's math. It's math, Robert. Yes. Are we putting it, it is, down here? It's playable? Yes. Yeah, there's a combo. There's a there's a combo with this card. I'd have to look up what the cards were, but I remember reading it like a day ago. There's a there's a combo with new cards from the set uh, that creates some sort of loop. And guess what this does on the backside? It adds black mana. Adds black. Can mana. I can I play it untapped? If you want, you just got to bolt yourself. Okay, cool. I would I would do that every time, okay. all the time. So, thumbs up, thumbs up yep. for that. Did you get my thumbs up? I did not. I'm I'm remember I'm like five seconds behind. Well, it's not. It was on the. It was in Skype directly, and now it's like broken. So, anyway, Black Bloom Rogue two three for three, with Menace, gets plus three plus zero as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. This one I don't think gets played. I agree, and see, this is different. It's different from the blue one because the blue one had a, a formidable power, and it also rewarded you for doing things naturally, like just playing instants and sorceries, which any deck in standard is probably going to have some. Uh, so whereas this if one is a like rogue mill deck. If there's a rogue mill deck, then this does get played. I lied. Okay, sure. But if there's not, it's not just a card you can just put in a blue deck or a black yeah. deck, rather. Yeah, it specifically has to go into a, a blue black uh, rogue mill deck. If that exists and it's good, then this card is definitely played because five power is a lot. And it's menace. Are we putting it on the list though? Yes. No. Oh. Only because I'm fairly certain that blue black rogues is a hundred percent a thing. You think we're just gonna mill in standard? You think we've got standard mills happening? It's it's not about milling. It's just it's hitting the eight cards is what it is. Hagra Mauling five mana or four mana two black black. It costs one less than opponent controls no basic lands. Uh, so it's three mana. It's a murder at that point and destroy target creature. Just gonna put it on there immediately. So good. This is literally it's just a, it's just an instant speed murder. Uh, a lot of, a lot of times. And it's if, if you don't need a murder, it's just a land. And I don't know, man. Just put it in your mana base. It's fantastic. Jesus. It's, what a time to be alive. I know. Malakir Rebirth. One black mana. Choose target creature. You lose two life. Until the end of the turn, that creature gains when this creature dies. Return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. Now, I think at first thought, it doesn't seem that great. But if you have... No, I think this uh, is good. A sack outlet and some ETB effects, it's pretty good. You don't even really need a sack outlet. Like, this is literally just blossoming defense, oh, it's right? it's an instant. It's an instant. Yeah, it's the same thing where you're like, hey, you try to kill my guy. If it has an ETB effect, the guy dies, but then it just comes right back. You know? Yeah, that's really good. I, again, like, it's just funny because it's like, it's such an unassuming card but because there's zero deck building cost for it, it's the same reason people put Street Wraith in their deck, right? Like, yeah. it's a free card in your 56, your your 36 cards, right? If you're playing 24 lands. It's just a free card that lets you play more spells for zero cost. And, like, Ugh. sometimes you'll cast a Street Wraith. Yeah, this is so good with Kroxa and so good with, with, with Uro. Oh, my lord. Yeah, you're like, all right, I'll take, t I'll lose two life, but I'll also gain six, and I'll draw two, and I'll make you. Yeah, oh. that's ugh. Palaka Predation, three mana, two and a black. Target opponent reveals their hand. You may choose a card from it with converted mana cost three or greater. That player discards that card. Again, this is still still not a bad fine. card, man. <laughs> Jeez, these are hilarious because it's like. Okay, will I play a black mana, uh, uh, like a, a land that comes into play tapped? Like, people play gain lands anyway, right? Like, I'm yeah. just playing a, 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 a monocolored gain land. And in the late game, I'm just like, okay, I'll take your Ugin. So, 
Okay, it's, cool. I'll take your Nissa who shakes the world if she was still legal. Yeah. I mean, again, if the cost was higher on these, if this was like one, you know, if if the land was like comes into play tapped and you take two, I'd be like, okay, maybe that's a higher cost. But like, just having a land come into play tapped, like we've been doing that for ages. The triumphs come into play tapped, you know, like, yeah, you yep. know, like your your fabled passage land comes into play tapped most of the time. So, Zoff consumption, six mana. Each opponent loses four, and you gain four. This is this is this doesn't seem that great. This is yeah. This one. This one's the worst one. This is a think, this is a commander card where they're like, all right, each opponent so four, 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 four. I'll gain four. Yeah. I still don't even think it would be played in, in commander. So I mean, not, it, it just takes the place of a swamp though. Or if a, it said you gain life equal to what it was lost, I agree that would be definitely better. Yeah, this isn't even good. Any, yeah, this is probably one of the worst ones. Sure. Yeah. Akum, we're we're in the red now, guys. Just in case you couldn't tell, Akum Hellhound. This is one Akum Hellhound, zero one for a one red creature whenever a land enters the battlefield uh it gets plus two plus two. it's just literally just a, a functional reprint of step links yep which, which means, means it's it good will be playable right <laughs> <laughs> which means it is just fine also keep to keep note though this is a zendikar format in standard that does not have fetch lands the old zendikar format had fetch lands mm, i didn't so know that. like now with step links played a gop like those creatures were amazing because they were getting plus four plus four a turn like without fetch lands like they're not as good they're still probably pretty strong though. Yep. Ardent Electromancer. Three mana for a three two. When it enters the battlefield, add a red for each creature in your party. This is rough because you have to use it that turn. Eh, okay. It's not that bad. Isn't it though? Right? Like Burning Tree Emissary. I mean, this isn't free, like Burning Tree was. So if you right? go one drop, two drop, then play this, you're getting three red one drop two drop then yeah exactly right because you're gonna have three like assuming that you hit other other party members so uh, wow so using using the situation you said you can go off with these like you could a burning tree you can play this you can play another electromancer you can play another <sighs> Fuck. Um, i'm gonna put it on the list because i do see that as having a lot of potential and and three power the third power is a big deal when you're especially when you're talking about these in multiples yeah and sure Plus, don't forget, like, you could actually go up to four or five mana with this in, in certain situations. Well, yeah, four, yeah, I guess, because exactly. there's only four party members. Yeah, I mean, like, it's not like I, I have to, I hope this magical Christmas land happens by turn three, because on turn five, if you have your, you know, three party members, or two, and then you, you play your wizard here, you just cast your five drop after casting your Electromancer. Mm hmm It's good. I think it's good. I think it's fine. I like you, you actually sold me. I was unimpressed at first, and then I'm like, well, wait. Because I was seeing it as like, oh, I get one mana. Like, what am I going to do with that? I'll just pass. But yeah. once you hit two or three or four mana, like, all right, now you're talking. Yeah. Now it's free spell. Now it's free spell time. Yep. Cinderclasm, two mana. It deals one damage to each creature. If it was kicked, it deals two damage to each creature instead. So it's two mana. The kicker is one. So for two mana, you're dealing one damage. For three mana, you're dealing two manage. Two manage. Two damage. Dose manage. I think it's. I think this is good. Well, the it's only an reason instant I speed pyroclasm for three, and this is that is historically played. There's the instant speed one now that doesn't deal damage to like pirates or something. That's that's yeah. There's no there's we have several of those flame sweeps. Yeah. Um, they're and they are played in sideboards, so this is playable. Yeah, I think this is good. Cleansing wildfire one and a red, destroy a land. Its controller may search the library for a basic land, put it on the battlefield, tap, then shuffle, draw a card. Love this card. We've gone over this. I think this card yep. is great. Yep. Check out Freshly Brewed. We talked about this. This card is awesome. Wherever podcasts are sold. Expedition Champion. Three mana for a 2-3. Once I see a three mana 2-3 and I see it's common, I'm just like, all right, let's just get it over with. Expedition Champion gets plus two, plus zero oh, as long as you control another warrior. Decent rate, but I still don't think just... Uh, even even if this was a three mana 4-3, I don't think it'd still be played. Oh, yeah, you're going to you're gonna go. Fireblade Chart. You can cut, target your own Darksteel Citadel. Yeah, that's literally what we said. We're like... Target your dark steel, and it's just a ramp spell that draws you a card. Yep. Fireblade Charger, a one one for one. Uh, as long as Fireblade Charger is equipped, it has haste. Good for you, buddy. When it dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So this is that's like a Dreadhorde busher almost. This is pretty good. I agree. With self equipping equipments, the 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 haste thing is kind of questionable, right? Well, even so, it's kind of like a uh mog fanatic right like it's it's always going to deal an extra point when it dies so like if you block a 2-2 you're killing a 2-2 two -two. 
Yeah, I think this is I think this is pretty good. Plus there's some equipment that like you cast it equips automatically like Yeah, no, no, that's what I'm fun. saying. I think this is pretty good. All right. Like if this thing has 4 power, like if you have an equipment that gives it like plus 3 power, like that's a lot of damage. Yeah, also it's just it's just painful to block at that point. You're like, All yeah. right, I guess I'll block it and take 4." Cuz it's probably trading with what you're blocking anyways. Yeah, like like Dreadhorde Butcher was also a card where I was like, "Well, fuck, I don't want to really, I don't want to block this, but I can't really take the damage either." So Yeah. Fissure Wizard. One and a red for a 2-1. When it enters the battlefield, discard a card. If you do, draw a card. It is a wizard. It is. I don't like it. Okay. Gomafada Vanguard. A Gomafada. That just <laughs> sounds like... that. Like I literally just feel like it's uh, I'm at my, my Thanksgiving with my family in there. These, First thing in Italian. These, hero, these Gomafada cards have been historically crap. That's a 2-2 two, two for 2, so that's good, right? Yeah. Whenever it attacks, target creature and opponent controls with power less than or equal to the number of warriors you control. It should have haste. Can't block. Okay. Cowards can't block. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'll keep going. Grow tag bug catcher. That's, that's <laughs> one. one two for two with trample. So you know you definitely want to block that one trample. When it attacks, it gets plus one for each creature in your party. So could be three two maybe with trample. This is this is the wrong card. This card should be green, or it should be red with first strike. Whatever it should be, it's not on the list. It's not good enough. Grow tag night runner goblin rogue two three for three. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may then you may play that card this turn. It's decent, but I still don't think it's good enough at three mana. This is surprising for an uncommon. This is not an uncommon ability. Stealing opponents' cards and being able to play them is not. Uh, uh, an uncommon ability. And plus it is play, not cast, so you can hit lands, which is super, super nice. Yeah. This seems surprisingly good for, for an uncommon. I don't think it's any good. Interesting. I don't think this card's any good. Hmm. Oh, it's also your cards. Yeah, it's exile your, your top card of your library you may play. It. So, I mean, you can still play lands for free, but... If this had haste, it'd be all right. Okay. Inordinate Rage... Plus three, plus two, and scry one. No. For two mana. No. Like, it's just it's just like this card costs one mana without the scry, and I don't think scry one is worth an extra mana. No. And like this is red's equivalent to giant growth, right? Like green cards get plus three plus three, red cards get plus three plus two. Yeah. But like they're usually fundamentally the same. So Cargan Intimidator. Here's a three one rare for two. Which that's a good rate for a rare because I know it's gonna have a bunch of abilities. Cowards can't block warriors. <laughs> <laughs> solid throwback yes choose for one mana you can choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn uh one of the modes is cargo intimidator gets plus one plus one so it's a four two you can only use it once target creature becomes a coward until end of turn so that creature can't block and target warrior gains trample until end of turn this is a good card i agree i think it's very versatile it's got a lot going on i'll put it on the list yeah it's a gladiator format <laughs> Sure is, buddy. Sure is. <laughs> Leyline Tyrant. I actually love this card. I like it when they have red cards that are really powerful that I really love. Uh, and they're never like the one mana two twos that like do stupid things. I'm always like, I don't care about that. Give me these. Give me these fat mid range dragons. That you like cool the shit. you like the green red type cards, not. The I do. Mono. I want cards that are going to cost four or five mana, and like you're going to have to really struggle to deal with this. Four four flyer for four. It's a dragon. Uh, you don't lose unspent red mana as steps and phases end. So this guy borrowed a little Omnath, a little Omnath magic. When Leyline Tyrant dies, you may pay any amount of red. When you do, it deals that much damage to any target. Like, you got to deal with this in, like, three turns or else it's just going to kill you, right? Because you could just, um, like, just start floating all of your mana. This card's really... I don't, I don't even understand this card. Like, I feel like this is really... Like, it's just... First off, I don't read it and go, "Oh my god, this is stupid." But the fact that you can you can keep your red mana, like that's pretty ridiculous. I mean, this lets you play Ugin on like turn 6 in a red deck. In a mono red deck, yeah, without rocks. Like on turn 5, you're just like, "All right, I'll float all 5 mana. On turn 6, I'll float 5, I'll float 6 mana. On now 11 mana, I'll play Ugin and I'll still have 3 floating." Yeah. I almost feel like at four mana though it's in the wrong spot to be as like the abilities aren't as good because it's on four mana. The deck this goes in, it's like ta you're tapping out, right? You're generally tapping out every turn. You don't have to be. 
Just no, saying. No one's forcing you, Robert. I like this deck. I like this card a lot, dude. Oh, I know you do. Well, I guess because I said it. Yeah. Yeah, that's twice. what I figured. Okay. He just he won't shut up about it. Yeah, I think this card is sweet. Relax and Sam, we were making a joke. Uh, re uh, uh, Cowards Can't Block is from Battle... Is it Battle Bond? Uh, it's a board win intimidator is the name of the card. No, 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 but... but no, the, the Gladiator battle. format is, is the battle joke bond. about Battle Bond, yes. Yeah, well, that that had the same... They had the, they had the exact same effect. That effect came from Battle Bond. No, the, the effect came from board, board win intimidator. The seven mana card from, like, Future Sight. Hold on. Are you being serious right now? Boldwin Intimidator? Bold Boldwin. Bold Boldwin Intimidator. Bold Weir Intim Bold Weir is what it's called. B O W B O L D W R N. No. W I don't know how to fucking spell this card. Bold Weir. Intimidator. Oh, the card is in Battle Bond. Yes. Yeah, okay. it's in Battle Bond. But I it was also it was, was first also... printed in Future Sight. So yes. Okay, I was confused. Okay. You just weren't you weren't aware of its of its initial printing. Yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're like, no, dude, that's a battle bond card, and I'm like, I guess. <laughs> okay. Magmatic Channeler. This is another really good card. One three for two mana. Uh, it's a wizard and a human, so relevant creature types. As long as there are four more instant and or sorcery cards in your graveyard, it gets plus three plus one, so it is a four wow. four for two. At any point in the late game, really. You can tap it and discard a card, exile the top two cards of your library, then choose one of them. You can play it this turn. So, like, even on your opponent's turn, if this is blocking, like, you can tap, exile the top two, try to hit a counter spell, and, like, counter one of their things. Well, I wouldn't think counter spell. I'd think more like, like a burn spell, but... What are you asking? What are you saying right now? I didn't. I don't know. Uh, this card's really good. It's a two-mana 4-4. Four, four. <laughs> I agree. This card is very, very good. Yeah. Um, I think it has a lot right? going on. It gives you, like, it's not only a 4-4 four, four for two a lot of times. It's it's definitely, like, it gives you free cards to play. Um, yeah. It also, again, it says, it says, exile the top two cards of your library, then choose one. You may play that card. Again, it says play not cast. So you can still hit lands off of this. Yeah. Like, it's very relevant. Playing, yeah. playing versus casting is very, very relevant. Molten Blast. Three mana. For an instant, Molten Blast deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker or destroy target artifact. That's not bad flexibility, honestly, but three is a I lot. Agree. I agree three is a lot. I don't know if you can get away with this for two, though. Well, a braid is just better, right? No, but a braid can't hit planeswalker. Doesn't though. hit a planeswalker, yeah, 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 yeah. It's definitely comparable to a braid, I think. Three mana is a little much. I'm not gonna put it on the list, but like no. I think it's definitely worth keeping an eye on. Like it's a, it's it's just fine. Yeah, no. If this was two mana, I think it would be definitely be playable, I think. Uh oh, what if you go turn two yeah, what if someone like in the chat, what if you go magmatic channeler on two? And then uh Riel Riel on turn three. So then you discard a card with this, and then you draw a card from the Riel. Cause you discarded it. Riel is the O three. I know what it is. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I was unimpressed. Really? Cow cowards can't block. Morog Fury of Akum. 6-6 six, six for 6, and it's a it's a Minotaur Warrior. Each creature you control gets plus 1, plus 0 for each time it has attacked this turn. Well, that's weird, because they're just going to be plus <laughs> O, plus O's. Well, why would you have that? Landfall. Whenever a lander is a battlefield under your control, if it's your main phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. That's how many times? Holy shit, I just got... I just had a phase stroke. Uh, if it's your main phase, phase there's additional phase. combat phase after this phase. phase. At the beginning of that combat, untap. At the beginning of that combat, untap all creatures you control. So if you have multiple ways to get lands into play, if you go play this guy, if you have this guy out, and the next turn you go land Euro, you're getting two extra combat phases. This card's bonkers. It's it seems really good. It seems like if you get to untap with this guy, you just win, right? And it really doesn't seem like like generally these six mana like huge red dudes are like they're hard to get them to work. This doesn't even seem hard to make it work. Like this is just draw a land and you profit. But also like even if this is your only creature on the board, like you still attack with a six six, then a seven six, then an eight. Like it's like this creature by itself attacking multiple times a turn seems really good. Yeah. You don't have to untap with him, correct? You can, he can, he can affect the battlefield uh, without them responding to yeah. it. Like that's really good. Yeah, I, I think this card's strong. Yep. 
Nahiri's Lithoforming. X red red. Sacrifice X lands. Let's say I sacrifice five lands. For each land you sacrifice, draw a card, so I draw five. You may play X additional lands this turn. Lands you control under the battlefield tap this turn. I don't think this card... This card's weird and I don't like it. This card's very good. What? This card's good. Explain it to me. It's just it's just a very good card. Why? I pay seven mana. <laughs> I sacrifice five lands. I draw five cards, but like... Let's say I replace three of those lands, right? So now I have three lands back. I'm down two lands, and I drew two cards. In a deck full of modal, modal, modal cards, like the flip lands, this card's really good. Why? Because it allows you to choose between spell and, and, and land. What do you mean it allows you to choose? With what you draw. Like I'm saying, if your deck is nothing but modal lands, that's what they're called, right? Modal lands. Right, but you're losing lands. Like a lot of the modal spells are more expensive, right? So like if I sacrifice four lands and I'm only putting two lands back, then like I only have like four lands in play at that point. So like, I don't know. This just seems like, it seems terrible. I don't know. Like it just seems bad. There's a com There's a combo for it. Hold on. Is there like a legitimate combo or are you just like hoping that it shows up in the chat? Like guys, I hope it, I hope there's, it a, there's a legitimate combo. I'm looking it up. Yeah, I bet there is. You, you're just lying about stuff. You, you idiot. You're you idiot. I was talking to myself. I, I don't like it. I'm not going to put it on the list. No matter put what it on the list you say. Until I prove you wrong. Oh, well, what you said, no matter what I say. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Are you done? Can I move on? Yeah, you can move on. Pyroclastic Hellion, 4-5 for 5, so alright, we know we know it's not going on the list. When it enters the battlefield, you may return a land you control to its owner's hand. That's cool. I like that ability. When you do, it deals 2 damage to each opponent. So they take 2, you get to bounce a spell. What are you doing with your mouth? 5 mana is a lot. Uh, no, it's not good. It's not going on the list. I'm just saying. It's a, oh. I, I like creatures that are bouncing lands now because then you just return a spell. Oh, I agree, like draw a spell. I agree with that. I also like the art. Oh, I mean, okay, so let's let's obviously Nahiri's Lithoforming is a great landfall combo card, right? You're you're sacrificing four lands to replay four lands. I just don't think the cost for that is very good. Like, let's say I want to do it for four, right? It's six mana. I, I don't think six mana is where you want to be. Like, even Scape Shift is four. And that just sacrifices all the things. I don't know. It's probably better than I'm giving a credit for. I'm probably just a moron and like it's really good. And I'm just I, I, I'm I gonna get think when I first smoked by it. When I first saw it, I did. I th I thought it was just crap, but then I um, saw the combo. I'm trying. I'm trying to find it here, and I'll send it to you. Relic robber, relic Robert, two two for three, uh, with haste. So perfect. It's a goblin rogue. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, they get a zero one colorless goblin construct. With this creature can't be blocked. Can't block. And at the beginning of your upkeep, this creature does one damage to you. So this is I I I mean we discussed this one on the podcast as well. I love this card. This card's I think great. It's, I think it's great. Um, being able to just give them a bunch of junk and have them deal <laughs> one damage every turn is really, really strong. <laughs> it's literal and junk. hard to deal with. Junk. And, uh, you know, like I said, it feels like a Chandra's emblem. So I'm going to put it on the list because I think it's a strong, I think it's a strong little buddy. Yeah. Rob's yeah. falling asleep. Only one more video after this. Rock slide. Yeah, hey, man, we only got to do it once every three months. It's okay. Jesus. Rock slide sorcerer. Four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. So, Rob, what do you think this card's going to do? Anything exciting? Uh, no. Okay. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, it deals one damage to any target. He can rock slide right into my limited deck. and Right uh, in your garbage. Right in my trash can. Royal eruption. Two mana with kicker five. It deals three damage to any target. Just for two mana, that's actually very good. Very or sorcery. Good. If this spell was kicked, it deals five damage instead. This seems really good. I like this card. I mean, okay, lightning hammer. Is that what it's called? Lightning hammer? Fire hammer? Volcanic uh, hammer. Volcanic, volcanic hammer. Volcanic hammer is a card that was was played when it was necessary, right? A break. Uh, what's what's the, there's got to be sorcery spells. Sorcery speed three damage cards, right? That get three damage. I can't think of. But either way, two mana for three damage is, is a good rate. The rate is good. So if you can get around the sorcery part, like. This dealing seven like five damage in the late game is seems seems fine. In a pure red aggro deck, this is a hundred percent playable. Hundred percent. I mean, this will see play. I want to put it on the list. 
it I mean we've been we've been missing in standard the two mana three damage spell. I mean I understand it's a sorcery and it's not a, but but at the end of the day it's a great top deck. It's great late game. It it deals with planeswalkers. It deals with creatures. It does it to the face. This five is five damage is five damage is good is big game. Yeah, copy this with a, if there's like a blue red like you know a wizards or aggro type deck then yeah copy this with a deal six damage that's pretty good. Roiling vortex two mana enchantment at the beginning of each player's upkeep it deals one damage to them so baby sulfuric vortex it's not mm-hmm. sulfuric yet it's just roiling right now yeah it's roiling up whenever a player casts a spell if no mana was spent to cast that spell roiling vortex deals five damage to that player your and and you can tap a red and your opponents can't give life this turn so again not quite sulfurics but sulfurics not quite sulfuric vortex but we can pay the red to get that life gain effect it's dealing one instead of three Plus, like, if they're playing Pact, uh, pact of Negation cards, like, pact, not Pact of Negation cards, but Pacts, uh, if they're unsuspending things, like... This is interesting. There's a lot of applications for the, the no mana was spent, like... I wish it was Price of Progress. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm putting it on the list, because I think it's very strong. I think it's a strong I'll card. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'll let it go. Yeah, this actually... I'll let it go. It fires... Fires scavenging blade scavenged blade two mana uh winners battlefield attach it so this is also a cycle obviously there's a cycle of five equipments they all attach when they come into play equipped creature gets plus two plus oh i don't think this one that's not exciting and equip equip for three okay i don't like this one yeah scorch rider four mana for a four three uh kickers two when it enters the battlefield it was kicked it gains haste so it's a four three or a four three with haste for six no nope shatter skull charger four three for three okay that's a good rate with trample and haste that's a real good rate mm-hmm. four three trample haste for three holy shit <laughs> kicker is two if it was kicked it enters with a one one counter so a five four for five at the beginning of your end step if it doesn't have a counter on it return it to its owners okay it got worse than that just... no this is still good really this is still it's very by ashino sandstalker right yeah but we had we no it's better than that we had uh we had the uh what were the name of the cards zergo was one of them dash dash and they defined Mono robert it's your it's your son's name and you couldn't yeah. even remember it <laughs> that that is embarrassing <laughs> no this card's great like this card's super good like even you don't this is uh, this card alone is four damage to the face every turn and and unless k- they respond kick to it's only five so you get a five three haste tra- five four haste trample yeah this is good. All right. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. I got discouraged because I was like, oh, I got to return it to my hand. Four, dude, four damage is a lot. Especially out of nowhere. It also doesn't get hit by Shatter. Shatter? It's not an artifact, shatter. so yeah, that makes sense. No, Shatter. Shatter. What is it? The four mana Wrath of God. Shatter the Sky. Yeah, doesn't get hit by that. Dodge well, unless shatter. you kick it. Shatter, here's Shatter. Shatter Skull Minotaur. Hmm. Uh, six mana for a five four. It costs one less for each creature in your party. Mm, that's interesting. It's it's got haste. Oh, it does have haste. So like, if this costs two less, it's a five four for four with hate. Mm. No, that's still not good enough. No, I was thinking it costs five, so we can get it down to like three. Uh, whenever we I think see you these still cards, can get around three, but no, no, no. But but when I whenever I see these cards where it costs less for the party members, I always just assume. Let's say I have two. I, yeah, a two is my baseline, I think. And I, I think if you can make it good at two, then it's probably fine. I think it has to be good at two. If it's if it's only good at three, then it's probably you're probably not going to make it. Yeah, yeah. Sizzling Barrage. One and a red. It deals four damage to a creature that blocked this turn. Nah. I mean, this is like... This is literally just Gideon's... Uh, the, the the Gideon card that deals four damage to Gideon's uh, reproach. Gideon's reproach, right? Which has been reprinted in Divine Arrow. Like the, there's that card's been reprinted ad nauseum in standard formats, and it never sees play. Yeah, you know. So like, I mean, like that also hits an attacking creature, yeah, right? So it does, and it's, it's still you're not playing it. So I don't think this card's gonna make it. Also, the way this card is wor- the way it's worded, it says that blocked. Does that yeah. mean damage or just declared as a blocker? Or does it always say that? It just that has number? to be... No, no, no. Because, like, the thing is, like, with Gideon's Reproach, it only deals it to a blocker, right? So you have to do it within the combat step. You can do this in the second main phase because the creature has blocked. You know what I mean? So right. It's, so, it's a, it's a so, distinction. Yeah, I get that. But 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 my question is, do I have to do this after it blocked? After damage was dealt? No, no, no. As long as... As soon as they declare it as a blocker, it has blocked. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, so you don't have to wait till damage. But you can do it in the second main phase, you know, yeah. if, if you want to leave combat for some reason. Yeah, okay. Skyclave Geopede. 3-1 three, for 3. This is like play the Geopede of the set, I imagine. With Trample, whenever a lander is a battlefield, it gets plus 2, plus 2 until end of turn. With a fetch land, this is like a 7-5. Like, Trample? Oh. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, man. This card... Uh, the base of 3 mana is a lot, but this is still seems pretty strong. Yeah, it does seem really good. I'm gonna put I like it on the list. Yep. I also don't like Geopedes. <laughs> that I wouldn't touch that. See that thing I wouldn't touch. Yeah, well, you probably shouldn't. It's got a high power level, Robin. That's my barometer. But it's got a low low block. Sneaking guide one one so okay, a worst case scenario, you guys will kill each other. Okay. <laughs> so one one for one. <laughs> oh. One one for one. Target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. So this this just feels like a, a card we've seen before. Yeah, yeah. Someone said, uh, Yabba Dabba said, I bet it would give the best hugs. Oh, it would give the best hugs. God. Like, <laughs> hug me with all your tentacles. Oh. Spitfire Legac. 3 4 for 4. Whenever a lander is the battlefield, it deals 1 damage to each opponent. That's good. I hope you have a good life. I miss Saddleback Legac. Legac! S- Synchronized Spellcraft for 5 mana. An instant, it deals four damage to target creature and X damage to that creature's controller. And again, it's party based. So again, like let's say you got two, two damage to a creature and a creature's controller for five mana. No. Yeah, I don't like it. Teeter Peak Am- I mean, because like I compare this to, like Tribal Flames, right? Where like you can have a maximum of four this time instead of five. And it costs five mana instead of two mana. And I'm just like, eh, no. Teeter Peak Ambusher, two mana for a one three. And for three mana, it gets plus two, plus oh until end of turn. No. Nope. Great chin, though. Great. Look at that chin. That's a Jay Leno chin if I ever seen That's one. That's a strong chin. Oh, my God. What Doth Life said that exactly. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Thundering Rebuke. Two mana. It deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. I'm just going to windmill slam this onto the list. I assume yeah. by your silence you agree. I, I don't. I just think the, uh, I think the three damage one's better. This kills Questing Beast and it kills Planeswalkers. Only Questing Beast can kill Questing Beast. <laughs> I, I, I don't think this is good enough. I don't. I think the three mana one's better. Oh, wow. I mean, Lava Coil has been played for ages, right? Like, and that's been four damage for, to kill Yeah. This yeah, does, you're, this yeah, does you're right. Planeswalker. It hits a Planeswalker. It hits a Planeswalker, too. Planeswalker's right, yeah, like a sweet it. spot, man. Yeah, I like it. Mark, don't be stupid, okay? I said I like it. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, we're, we're almost through. We're almost through uh, video two, and I'm, 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 I'm like, ah. it's okay. We'll take a break. We'll take a quick break. No, no, no. We'll take one after that. Yeah, I'm good. No, Thundering I'm just, I'm Spark mess- Mage, two, two for four. When it enters the battlefield, it deals X damage. Oh god, there's so many X's in the set, and it's always party based, and I just don't care. Okay, so it's gonna deal two damage to. I mean, this is great and limited. Like, it's just literally like a an, uh, steam core weird. But you know, not in. Keep going. Tormenting voice. I'm so disappointed that this card is in the set. Why? We have the instant speed version, and now we're going back to the sorcery speed version. And I want to know, like, who was sitting around the design table, and they're like, wait, wait, wait. Instead of that instant speed version, let's go back to the sorcery speed version. Either A, because they're like, some obscure reason in the set would make this better as a sorcery, and then an instant, it's more challenging, and it's it's going to be more, it's not as good, and you kind of want to challenge them and force them to play it. Through. Like, some kind of bullshit R&D. Or, I can't, I don't know, I can't think of another reason. I don't. Um, I'm never going to play this if I got the instant I'm sorry version. you're angry. You what? I'm sorry you're angry. It's okay. Oh, forgive me. Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort. Zero three for three. Defender. Tuck, tuck. Reach. Creatures you control have haste. I like this giving haste. But for crying out loud, Rhythm of the Wild, this is not. No, it's crap. It if won't. we're talking about three mana red cards that give haste, like, give me a Rhythm of the Wild any day. I love that card. Rhythm of the Wild has its own song. <laughs> yeah. It's a Rhythm of the Wild. Valakut Exploration. Three mana for a red enchantment. There's a lot of red enchantments in this set. Yeah. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled. For as long as it remains exiled. Play. Again, play, not cast. At the beginning of your end step, if there are no cards exiled with Valakut Exploration, put them into their owner's graveyard. Oh, if there are cards exiled, put them into their owner's graveyard. Then it deals that much damage to each opponent. This okay, is so good. basically... 
You're going to get one card off this when you play a land. Which is weird because uh, it only triggers when you play a land. So your odds of like being able to play a land off this is low. Unless you have like an uncracked fetch land. No, so. I think the point. I think the point of this card is so that when you flip lands, you're dealing damage to the face. I guess. I think this is good. I think there have been times in past in past standard where in most of these cards, these enchantments in red that let you see extra cards per turn were normally four mana. It they feel, were normally four CMC. It feels like a Chandra Torch of Defiance ability. Yeah. So like every time you're going to reveal a land, it's going to deal one damage instead of revealing land dealing two damage. Uh, and you can choose to play the land like you could like or play the card rather as you could with Chandra Torture Defiance or not play the card. Yeah. And if you don't play the card, it deals one damage instead of two damage. Like it's very much Chandra Torture Defiance plus plus two ability. Yeah, if you play this with Azusa, that's interesting. You get to see a lot of cards. What's an MDFC? Double face card. What's M what's modal, the M modal modal. Modal double face card. Is that why 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 not just call it a double face card? I don't know. I don't know that why they, that that's just it is what it is. Stop yelling at me. I'm sorry. I'm gonna put it on the list. It's fine, right? It's good. I like it. I think it's good. Okay. Wayward Guide B. I hate this card. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's frustrating. One mana for a two-two trample haste. Uh, whenever it atta whenever it does combat damage to a player, return a land you control to its owner's hand. I don't think it's playable in standard. It's definitely not playable in standard. It's. I think it's unplayable in standard. I think it's something like Modern Burn. It might find a home. I honestly don't even think in burn it finds a home. There's just better. There's better cards at the same mana cost. You don't want to put it on the list. No. I don't want to put it on the list out of spite, because I think it's stupid, and I think it looks stupid, and I don't want to even look at its stupid face anymore. I would touch it. Akum, <laughs> Akum warrior, six mana for a four or five tramp. See this rate, I don't think is good. I think six mana is probably my my turning point where I'm like, eh. I just can't see like if I'm in red, this card doesn't seem like a card that I'd mm -hmm. want on a land. Akum, oh, Akum teeth is just the other side adds a red. We don't, we all know what that does. This one's no good. Kazul's Fury for two and a red. Uh, it's literally fling for three. That's not bad. That's this is a way to close out a game. Didn't you say it's no good? You, what? you said oh, you card. said this card's no good. Were the you referring to the last it. one? Okay. Yeah. I think that, yeah, I think this card's actually fine. Like this could deal like five or six out of nowhere. Yeah, remember I'm 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 lagging behind you. Okay. Yeah, Kazul's Fury seems good. Yep, like this one. I mean again, I'll just play it as red, but like in the late game, like I can deal you an extra four or five damage for just yeah. nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is actually a way to trigger your dragon too. Oh, you can yeah, you can spend three, sacrifice your dragon for four, and then they also and then lose damage. You have left the, up. Yeah. Yep. And Kazula's Cliffs is the other side. Shatter Skull Smashing is the mythic version. X red red. It, it this is kind of confusing. This is a confusing one. It deals X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. So let's say you do it for five. Seven total mana, X is five. You get to deal five damage divided between two targets, creatures and planeswalkers. Mm -hmm. If X is six or more, so once you hit eight mana, deals twice that man damage divided. So um, so if I pay six, I just divide twelve damage between the two targets. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think this is good. I wish you could hit players, but like that might be too strong. It's too strong. I think it's, it's way too strong. Too strong land. Right. Yeah, that's way too strong. You're like, all right, I'll deal you fourteen with this, and you're like, this is great. Uh, like this, like these. This is the card that whenever you're playing a red deck and you run up against like a, a huge creature that you can't get through, your land gives you the ability to do that now. <sighs> yeah, it's really good. good. I think it's really good. I agree with you. Shatter Skull, the Hammer Pass again. It's a it's a it's a red mana that comes into play untapped if you pay three life. Song Mad Treachery, five mana, gain control of a creature until end of turn. Untap it, it gains haste. So it's literally just a just a, a threat and a threat of treason. Yeah, this one's probably too expensive. I think I think I can only see this as like a one of it. I agree. That's I think I think five is a little bit much. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep going. Yep. Song Mad Ruins, adds a red. Spike Field Hazard. One red, it deals one damage to any target. If a permanent dealt damage this turn, would die. Exile instead. I think that's fine. This is good. I mean, this is a red a red land that you can play in your deck that kills Noble Hierarchs, Land of War, it's a Land of War Elves. Like, I mean, any X1 creatures just die, and then the Exile. Like, 
Also, if you target Euro with this while its ability is on the stack, it will get Bye-bye. exiled instead. Like, that's cool. This card. This card's really good. Yeah. Father. I'm just really impressed, man. Like, It's four more burn spells you just put in your deck at the cost of nothing. This is like a, the first set in a long time where I feel like the cards are impressing me without being utterly busted. Right, and I like, agree. They're not just like, I'm going to attack 15 abilities onto this card to blow you away, like Euro or Oko or, or Questing Beast. They're just yeah. cards that have a simple ability, but because of their versatility, like they're actually very, very good. Yep. Spikefield Cave, add a red. Valakut Awakening, three mana. For an instant, put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. I love this because at worst it cycles. I'll put zero on the bottom, I'll draw one. You'll always yeah. replace itself. Yeah, this is good in red, and it's instant speed. Yeah, I think this card is one of the better ones. Yep. So, again, like, you're getting rewarded. Like, if I play, like, a 30-land deck, and I just draw a bunch of, you know, regular lands, I can be like, I'll put three lands on the bottom, draw four. Yep. Yeah, all right. I think that might be the last one. Balakut Stoneforge, and that is the end of the red and black. Thank you guys for watching. Again, let us know in the comments what you think of the red and black cards. Are there anything we missed? Are we missing sweet interactions? Were there any cards we said were trash that are actually very good? Or are there <laughs> any very good cards that are just trash? Let us know. Check out nordvpn.org slash Frank Lepore for 68% off a two-year subscription along with one free month. And check out manatraders.com along with the link and promo code down below to get 20% off your first three months. Slam those like and subscribe buttons. We'll see you next time, guys. Thanks, guys.